Reiner Knizia designed this game, so I again bought it instantly. Why do I keep on doing this to myself? So this is Babylonia, the latest in a long line of Reiner Knizia games, but it's also a return to some kind of form for those big box Reiner Knizia games that many of you have heard of, perhaps, like Through the Desert, Blue Lagoon, Samurai, Tigris and Euphrates, Yellow and Yeah, there's a lot of them. How does this one play? This is Babylonia. Look at that beautiful board. It's the Tigris and Euphrates River again. I've dropped the box lid, but I can't pick it up because I'm filming. What we're going to be doing in this game is we're going to try and surround these cities. We're going to try and surround these ziggurats. We're going to try and take over this arable farmland, all in a bid to get the most points, obviously, in Babylonia. Each player is going to have a rack. More on that later. Spoiler alert, I suck, because you're going to have a bunch of these tokens. These tokens have different symbols on them, and those symbols mean things. What they mean, I can't remember, because it basically does not matter, other than these, which is their farmers. I think they're priests and merchants and ch chiefs of some description. No idea, but these are farmers. On your turn, you have a few options. You can either play two chips of any variety like these two or these two or these two or these two or you can play three or more farmers in your rack you're going to have five chips to start off with and you're going to at the end of your turn be drawing back up to a hand of five or a rack of five and those are your two options so why do you want to play those different things down and why is there a discrepancy between which you can play well it all comes down to the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Here we have ziggurats. Ziggurats are going to score when you go next to one. I've just scored one point. If I was to go here with my turn, because I'm playing two of different, different types, I would score another two points. One point for being next to one ziggurat, then this point, one point for being next to each of two ziggurats. If I was to go here next, I'm next to two ziggurats still, so I get two points. And on another turn, for instance, if I was to come over here, I'd get three points for putting one there, because so I'm next to three ziggurats. So you can see that ziggurats are going to slowly and steady get you a lot of points if you're next to all five, for instance, and you can be racking up points in that manner. The next way to get points is to go and get the points directly from these farmlands. If you put a, something down, like this, then you can go here and take one of these. You have to go next to it first to then put a farmer on it or something on it to take it as farmland. That's going to get you seven points immediately. If you claim this type of farmland though, you get one point for every city that you have. Cities are going to score in a similar way. I'm going to explain something else about ziggurats and cities at the end, but bear with me. There's lots of cities on the game. And you'll notice that they have different symbols. If I was to do this, let's just make this up as quick as possible, see how good our decisions are. You can place in the rivers, by the way, and you'll have to place upside down. I'll explain why that may be in a bit. This is terrible for white, I'll tell you that for nothing. So this is now going to score. It only has to be covered, it only has to be surrounded by land, but once it's surrounded totally, uh, it doesn't have to be, the water don't have to surround it, but if once it's surrounded totally by land, it scores. How does it score? It scores two points for every connecting symbol that surrounds that. So every one of those symbols or those symbols that surrounds this scores two points. Blue is going to score two for six points. If they score this, they have the majority around it as well, so they're going to claim this city and they get one point just for claiming the city. When a city's claimed, everybody scores one point for every city they have already claimed. That's important and difficult to remember sometimes. Brings us back to this, which is gonna score you one point when you get these, one point for every city that you already have as well. Now, this is how they're gonna score, but you can do 
different and exciting things. For instance, let's say the next one to score was this. Ignoring everyone else's turns, obviously, and you might think, well, Matthew, they're not going to score many points for this city because there's none of these symbols around it. That's not true because it's the chain. They all connect. So this has one, two, three, so two, four, six points because they connect in some way. So this is a game of blocking people off. And then blue will take this. Blue gets one point for that. And another point for the other city they already claimed. One last thing you can be doing to get points is getting the majority around the ziggurat. When you get the majority around the ziggurat, when all the land spaces around the ziggurat are connected, and that's why you might want to put things in water upside down. You don't count for the symbol, but you can connect things in a vast network of point scoring goodness. When a ziggurat scores, because it's completely surrounded on land, you get to claim one of these bonus tiles. These bonus tiles are going to give you points, they're going to give you another turn, they're going to give you the ability to play three different things instead of just two, they're going to give you lots of different abilities, seven things in your rack, lots of things to think about and lots of ways to get as many points as you possibly can. The game is going to end when someone can't play any more of their chits or when the last city is taken off the board. And that's a very brief overview of how you play Babylonia. So yeah, I really, really like Babylonia. But I also am totally predisposed to enjoying these kind of Reiner Knizia games, as well as lots and lots of other Reiner Knizia games, because again, I'm a massive Reiner Knizia fanboy. I can't help it. So to talk about Babylonia specifically, it's fun, right? You're trying to get majorities around different things, the cities, the ziggurats. You're trying to get different ways to get all the, the farm tiles. Lots of very convincing ways that you can go about winning this game. It's a game that showers you with rewards completely and unrelentingly as you get points and points and points. On top of points, even when it's not your turn, you could be getting points. And that's fun. And I like that a lot. What I also enjoy in this is how quick the turns are, how easy it is to learn. It takes a couple reads of the rule book, right? To go, okay, this is how these score, this is how this scores, this is how this scores. But once you've got that, once you start playing it, more importantly, it really does become quite evident how the game works. Because it's a simple game. It's, it's, it's closer to Blue Lagoon than it is anything anywhere near Tigris and Euphrates, for instance. I was hoping for a heavier title from Dr. K. Because after Blue Lagoon, I thought maybe this will be slightly heavier. And it isn't. It's still very fun, but I was hoping for something a bit more involved, maybe. But that does not mean I didn't enjoy it. I just had to kind of re rethink how I was going about the game and thinking, reconsider how I was approaching the game is a better way to put it. I think the board is absolutely beautiful. I love the chits that you're using, the big wooden chunky pieces. The racks in the game, I'll get one out. The racks are rubbish. These things, they suck. I'm sorry. These absolutely suck. They're terrible. I need to come up with something else. Just little... You know, the little racks that you get in Scrabble would have been better. These are garbage. But everything else is absolutely incredible and very, very lovely. I really do like it. I do really like the bonus tiles. Uh, Eric Martin, in his review on Board Game Geek, mentioned this, that bonus tiles isn't something that Rani Knizia tends to do. And the bonus tiles, when you surround a ziggurat in this, are fun. They're interesting and there's something to think about going for early on. One thing that is slightly frustrating is that it's not an equal amount of turns, which is something you really have to pay attention to because at, towards the end of the game, you can be getting 20, 30, 35, 40 points for doing your turn. And that's massive. And if you also end the game and you went first, it meant you got an extra turn and you won because of it. I would like to house rule this so that everybody gets an equal amount of turns. And that's something I probably will do going on. So the question remains, do you need Babylonia if you already own a bunch 
of Reiner Knizia games. And you know, well, I can't tell you what you need to do in your life. Do you need any of these games? Yes, by Yukon Airways, best game of the year. Same company, actually, now I think about it, both Luda Nova. What a role there must be on. You don't need this one. I did, but I don't think you absolutely need Babylonia. If you've got Blue Lagoon and Samurai and Tigris and Euphrates, all those games that I have, maybe you don't need this, but I'm very happy I have it. And if you like that light, that lighter root building Reiner Knizia game, I think you're really going to like this one. But for something that you might hate, then you can always check out our podcast, This Game's Broken, the board gaming panel show where the person with the fewest points is always us. I'm Matthew Juden. Thank you so much for watching this review of Babylonia. Bye.